You're watching Bet Safe. We're talking round nine of the F1 Championship 2017. With me is Johnny Herbert, as always. And um, before we start talking about Austria, let's talk about Azerbaijan. Let's talk about Baku. I've been saying to you, when do we see Sebastian Vettel's personality? <laughs> well, my lord, we saw it, didn't we? Road rage. We did indeed. Yes. Uh, not the smartest move, I think. I've seen any driver, any driver do. And I think the, the biggest disappointment from Sebastian was denying it didn't sort of happen really it was all to do with what he said Lewis Hamilton sort of brake tested him in the corner which was absolutely rubbish uh, to be honest but then to go to that next step and then drive into a fellow driver was absolutely totally out of order and actually got away with it pretty 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 well luckily for him of course when Lewis had his um, his protector sort of come loose in the car after he got his mm. his penalty of course Lewis had a penalty and then that made the race a little bit closer, but it's made the championship better, I suppose, overall. So for us, it hasn't been a bad thing, but a very, very bad Sebastian Vettel. And that darker, darker side of a, of a racing driver. But we were looking for a bit of character. And, and all of a sudden, you know, Lewis Hamilton's got a little halo. Doesn't yep. he? He's, yeah. he's, he's the good boy now. Yeah, and, and again, and he's being a good boy on the track because his, his speed, his, his Mercedes team are really supplying the goods. Mm. We honestly thought that the Ferrari were going to be sort of such a strong force. And that sort of, sort of wavered about a little bit. It's sort of not quite sort of there. And you think, ah, oh, this is going to be the weekend where the Ferrari are going to be strong. And then it doesn't quite happen. And then Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton bounce back. So, but it was a great performance from Lewis Hamilton. You look at that qualifying lap that he did. Absolutely, more or less sort of that, that perfect lap. Took it very sort of well. Didn't really sort of say it was anything particularly special. But when you watch it, you can just see that little extra little bit of, of talent sort of coming through and then the race itself yeah we had all that mix up but he controlled it very well and actually came out of it I think in, in a very positive way but wasn't it great to see someone else win as well it's great to see mm. Daniel Ricciardo do do a great job like Lance Stroll I thought that was a brilliant result for him after the result he had in Canada again in his first points and really took the pressure very very well considering uh, Bottas was fighting him and then losing out by 10th uh, as he went across the line to finish third. So we had a nice mix-up uh, of a race, and it's how we get another one. We'll talk about the, well, I say strange-looking podium. Their, their, their mums and dads won't think that, will they? They'd no. be very proud of them. But, uh, <laughs> I think so. Talk about, just before, I'm, I'm really still stuck on the, the whole road rage incident. And was it frustration, do you think, from Ferrari? And, and particularly, yeah, from, from Vettel? Was it, just, was it a frustration point? I, 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 th I think it's, it's, it's a situation where we've got the championship going on. At that situation, at that point, we had Lewis in the lead and, of course, Sebastian second. So actually, it, they were in the perfect uh, position because obviously the grid at that point had been sort of really closed down after it had been strung out for a little bit. So actually, Sebastian was probably in a great position, to be perfectly honest. And to do what he did and how he did it in front of the world and in front of the stewards who are going to look at that and go, you know, what can we do? We're going to have to penalise him. It was just totally, totally out of, out of character from a racing driver in many respects. I honestly don't believe you'd ever see that from Lewis. I don't think you'd ever see him do some stupid thing like that, drive into the, into the side of the car. I don't think you guys at home wouldn't even drive in the side of a car. Petulant, I think it was, was it? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was just a little sort of, you know, school kid in the in the in the playground mm. spitting at his dummy or kicking them, you know, on the on the ground and shouting and screaming. So it was a really weird situation to see. I'm glad we've seen it in many respects, mm. to be perfectly honest, because it just shows the pressure that sportsmen are always under. It shows the, the pressure that a Formula One driver is under. And I think that's what it is. I think it's the pressure because he can see that the maybe the advantage that Ferrari had, you know, earlier in the season isn't there anymore and then you're seeing this sort of dominant Lewis Hamilton again uh, what he did in qualifying we're seeing him then effectively controlling the race and he's seeing it sort of slip away so now he's doing that sort of slightly I don't know dirty side of, of, of a sportsman which is try and do things that really aren't probably above board and I think that's exactly what we saw uh, in Azerbaijan but Am I surprised? In one way, yes, I am, because I respect, and I think we always respect what uh, Sebastian Vettel has mm. done. You know, he's a four-time world champion, for, for one thing. 
but I think it was just the manner he did it in the situation that he did it. He made himself look absolutely, I think, ridiculously stupid just because he sort of denied it after the race. <laughs> it's all those elements. If he, if he admitted it, I think, I think we'd have even more respect for him in some ways because he was sort of admitting that it sort of, you know, he did do it on purpose. But to deny it and keep on denying it for a good few days, and it's only recently uh, that he sort of accepted it with the FIA sort of getting involved at the same time. But it's taken him that long to do that. So he was completely, completely stupid. But from our, I say from our point, I think it's great. I know great, there's a great situation now where possibly, possibly, this needle is just going to be at its sort of its upper strength for us watching because we don't know what's going to happen hope so yeah i think we i, I do hope so because yeah. i think it would be really refreshing what? for racing to have that sort of yeah needle yeah like that well he got away with it anyway yeah he whichever did. way you look at it yeah, well, he did. really <laughs> he, he did yes he did um, and if you look at baku um i think seven retirements three safety cars it was a bit of a bit of a race really wasn't it, it was a, and of course you know and, and, and unexpected podium finishes as well oh yeah that's what we want we want those unpredictable races you know they're great to watch because you you don't know what's going to be what, what's going to happen and you have the incident as we saw with with Sebastian and Lewis but of course then further back we had a driver a young rookie as I said Lance Stroll mentioned earlier on who who we never expected to be on a podium this this season was able to do that in a Williams which is brilliant for, yeah. for the Williams teams as well. So that was really good. Dan Ricardo as well, a great drive back from Valtteri Bottas as well to get himself back into second after the incident he had earlier on. So he was effectively at the back of the grid with his fellow Finn teammate. And they have history. They've done this before. Russia, I think, is one of those I remember. And it's happened again. There was sort of the blame game going on between those two, Kimi blaming him. But Kimi was around the outside. Valtteri, could he go anywhere? He clipped the curb. That's why they sort of went into each other that's racing at the end of the day. So that, that was good to see as well. It was a shame that we didn't see Kimmy sort of involved with the race. But overall, I think the whole, the race was just a lovely, lovely mix of what I think we expect to see from, from Formula One. Because I think that's what, my, what the entertainment factor is all about. Having something and a race where it is totally unpredictable. They're not gonna happen all the time, sure. But it's great that we have them like that. And I think it was great that that mixed podium you were talking about was brilliant. Actually mixed top 10, which was great. Yeah. And you look at the standings now after eight rounds then. Vettel now on uh, 153. Hamilton, 139. Bottas, 111. He's going to be pleased with that, hasn't he, so far? I think so. Again, he's sort of just hanging in. And I think that yeah. was a brilliant, as I said, brilliant drive back. And hopefully that's something that will just stir him on going into a race that he's done well in the past. And Ricardo, 92. I would suggest he'd be very pleased with that. Uh, I think he'd be exceptionally. I think he yeah. was totally in shock, actually. I think we're getting in that race win, but good on him. Uh, and then uh, look at uh, constructors after the, after the rounds. Mercedes, 250, and Ferrari, 226. Yeah. Fair on the... Uh, yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, the way the Mercedes have come back, I think that's just proof in the pudding that they've really dug deep and they're actually coming out of it smelling of roses at the present time. So on to Austria. Yeah. What can we expect? Can we get anything like we saw in Baku? Like? Oh, uh, well, we've had it in the past, and that's, and that's only been where we've had a Mercedes-powered unit, which is what Austria is all about. It's all about the power. Mm. Where we had that surprise pole position a couple of years ago with uh, Felipe Massa and Valtteri Bossas locking out the front row for, for Williams. And it was really, we expected the uh, Mercedes to be on the front row. So it didn't happen from that perspective. Yes, they went on to win the race, which wasn't, uh, which probably wasn't a problem for them. What can come into play is obviously is the weather there. It's up in the mountains in in Austria, and you can get that cloud build up that can bring in the rain. And when you get that, them unpredictable races sort of start to come our way. If yep. it's dry, I think you're still going to get the the Mercedes powered cars. So that will be obviously Mercedes, Force India, Williams, for example, who are going to be quite strong there. You're still going to put Ferrari in the mix because their power unit seems to be quite strong at the moment. But you have to say that at the moment, the edge still goes to the Mercedes. I think we've discussed this sort of during the first sort of first eight races where the quickest car I've always believed has been that, that Mercedes. Pure race pace. I think what we're seeing now is that one lap race pace, but actually we're seeing the, the, the qualifying move across uh, to that race pace. And I think that's the important thing. The window, I think, I think we've discussed before, I think has now got bigger, which is allowing Lewis, uh, maybe Valtteri, but more Lewis to sort of get the results that uh, I think we're, 
we're starting to see him do or the performances that he's starting to do. The weather could really play a big part, couldn't it? Because you're right, up in the mountains, mm. we are in European summer right now, so it could be, it could be baking hot one, one minute, but it could, it could actually bring rain because of how high up it is. Yeah, and, and the good thing about it, I had a wet one there, I think it was in 1997, I think it was, when I was at Salva, well, 98, and it was uh, a qualifying, and it was wet at the start of it, and it dried so, so quickly, and it was the last lap that was going to be the qualifying lap. Now, if that comes into play in qualifying, that's really going to mix up the grid as well, because there are opportunities to take it, just a little little risk to get the right tyre on at the right time, which is always going to be the slick tyre. A little bit of a risk if it's a little bit sort of damp, but it, as I said, it dries so, so quick there. I don't, know if that's, I don't know if that's to do with the slight altitude that it's got at the same time. I think it's an element of the way that the tarmac is as well, with the heat that you do actually generate at this time of year in Austria as well. So you get a lovely mix of this uh, weather that just generates around that, that, that circuit there at the Red Bull Ring. Who does this benefit then, this track? It's a strange looking track. It looks like a big arm, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not, the, it's not the most difficult track. You know, you've sort of got turn one, which is like a, you know, I don't know, it's about a fourth gear, nine, uh, 90 degree corner onto a long, long straight into a sort of second gear hairpin. Now that's all going to be really down to the power unit itself and that's where the Mercedes you still think is going to have that advantage down that long long straight. Then there's a fairly sort of longish straight after that sort of uh, turn two and again that's where that you the power unit is going to be used and generally the circuit is just very flowy and with that flow that means that you're just continually to sort of build up that speed. So again, I would say that it's going to be it's got to be Mercedes this time around for sure. I think because of the the work ethic that they've had since their difficulties in Russia in Monaco, especially, and then the bounce back and that the real strength that they've had on the racetrack in Canada and obviously really what we saw in Azerbaijan. So I think that's going to continue uh, from from that perspective. But you still don't know about Ferrari. You always know they're going to be sort of there or thereabouts. Maybe they've done some sort of extra work before they've got to uh, to Austria. Maybe they're just going to have that little race pace ingredient because it's all going to be about the race. The qualifying's great. It's great to get a, a, a pole position. But I think Sebastian and Ferrari know very, very well it's about the race. That's where the points are, and that's where they've got to get it right. And there is a chance of of them doing that. But I think I've still got to go down with Mercedes. Really. Yeah. What, even though the bromance is over, you know, Lewis and Sebastian have changed their Facebook status. <laughs> We're no longer in a relationship. <laughs> is it, it going to get rough? <laughs> Can we see it? Because that's what we want to see, isn't it? I think it still will. I think it will still be the case. I don't think, you know, any, any of them is going to go, oh, that's it, that's all over. I can't sort of fight uh, yeah. either one or the other. They're going to fight nail and tooth all the way until the, the end of the season. And I think that's what's going to be great about this. I've yeah. said it before, and I think we have seen it generally. Um, it's going to be a, a mix mash during the season of, of one going well at one, one particular circuit. We're having a strong time for Mercedes at the present time, but later down the, the season it could quite easily swap around the other way. And I've said it's a Mercedes probably advantage going to Austria, but that's not a guarantee. That's what's great about it at the moment. And we probably think for the last two races, as I said, it has been Mercedes, but it, we've seen it in the first sort of eight races. That doesn't last very long. There is always that swap around. Austria could, 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 could do that. You think it's Hamilton? Um, bet safer agreeing. Yep. Uh, <laughs> he, he is evens yeah, going into this. Sure. Sebastian Vettel is uh, is eleven to four. Yeah. Um, Valtteri Bottas five to one to win the race. Okay. Yeah, it's I not. think that's been pretty sort of even, even all the way across. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So, so I think, yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, Hamilton seventy-five to record the fastest lap. Yeah. The, the 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 one thing with Lewis, he's not so much interested in probably getting that that fastest lap because his main goal is to actually get that race win. So, I probably expect it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably, so, I probably do expect it. Yeah. So where's it going? So Lewis to finish. Sebastian to throw his dummy out? Yes, I think they're still going to be. Well, the dummy won't be thrown out on the racetrack, I don't think, this time. The dummy could be thrown out behind, behind the, uh, the garage door in his Ferrari team. That's where that pressure is going to start to really ramp up. Johnny, thanks as, as ever. We're off to get our Viennese swirls and coffee cake. You can check out all the latest odds on betsafe.com. And remember, you've got to be in it to win it.